Hey everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room. Um, I apologize, it's been a couple of weeks since I put any videos up. Um, the darn corona came through, hit our household, um, took us out of commission for a couple of weeks, my wife and I. Um, we're doing good, no pre-existing conditions, everybody's great, so don't worry about that. But I feel bad, I have not had the energy um, or the focus to be able to go through and be working on any videos or my pinball machines, so things have just kind of sat for a couple of weeks, so I apologize. Um, I, I want to give a huge thank you though, like I've been watching, we're up over 400 subscribers now, it just boggles my mind, I cannot believe how many people are um, coming along for the ride and enjoying this. I've been loving the comments I've been seeing by everybody who's been watching. I've been impressed by the number of people who are either in the middle of a restoration project or a retheme or already building their own pinball machine or are starting now finally and getting things going. Um, I think a lot of you have seen this kind of like a kick in the pants, like, yeah, dang it, I need to get back on that project. So, so awesome. Thank you so much for following along. I think it's amazing. I love it. Uh, whether you're just you know, sitting there in the morning drinking a cup of coffee and not doing any project and just along for the ride just to watch because it's interesting. Awesome. I appreciate that too. Thank you so much, everybody. So for all of you who are watching, first time you're new, please like, subscribe, share this out with everybody else. Let people know we're documenting this entire process for this Led Zeppelin pinball machine. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm excited to get back into it now. All right. So today what we're going to be covering is a little more about Fusion 360. One of the viewers, Michael, asked me if I could take a little bit of time to go through and talk more about how I take the measurements from a play field, put it into an actual 3D model, and then from there convert that into the actual manufacturing tool paths um, that the CNC machine needs to have in order to understand and interpret, um, interpret what we're doing so it knows where to cut and make all the right holes on the, on the actual piece of wood for our play field. So that's what we're gonna dive into and talk about today. Hope that's interesting. Um, so let's just keep moving along, all right? So I've got my, I'm here from my home office. This is where I work during the day. Um, I've got my, my trusty little laptop here. And we're just going to dive right into Fusion 360, all right? So hopefully this won't be too long of a video for you. And we'll just show you what I've learned so far in Fusion 360. And hopefully it's helpful to you, all right? Okay, Michael, hope this works for you. Here we go. All right, so coming here onto my computer screen, you can see I've got my basic rectangular model here for my, uh, for my play field. And I've got it all set up here. So it's already got all the holes already, already you know, set up and ready to go. Um, let me talk about how I went through and did this. I'm going to try not to spend too much time on it, but there are um, a couple of different ways you can go through and do this. And the first way, if you if you recall, is I went through and spent time going through and trying to get a good, accurate scan of my play field. Okay. And the way I did that, if you recall, I took an old, uh, well, an old, I took a Canon scan or a new one I got off Amazon, kind of busted off some of, the, some of the plastic, the edges of the bezel, so I could get it nice and flat down onto the play field. And that way I could get um, a full scan without any distortion around the edges. And at first glance, I thought it worked beautifully. Then I started to bring it inside the Fusion 360 here. And let me talk about that. So to bring in a canvas, basically that's what Fusion 360 just calls a reference image. You bring it in, you have it there on the screen, and then you can use it to then be your reference point of knowing where and how to draw your holes and different slots and things you need um, that you need to um, to model, right? And if you recall, I got into it and I got all frustrated and I kind of abandoned it because I kept seeing all these inconsistencies between what I was modeling following the image here for these inlane ball guides versus what I actually needed for my actual piece of wood. Well, in hindsight now, I think my scans would have worked out just fine. Um, the problem was I kept forgetting that Deadpool uses plastic inlaying ball guides that are different than these stainless steel metal ones that I bought from Marco Specialties. So the holes don't line up because they're just different pieces. And I guess I never got to my thick skull that that was the difference. Anyway, needless to say, let me show you really fast how you can use a canvas. A, a scan of a play field is not the easiest thing to get. Unless you're going through and hacking like I was like a scanner. Um, if you use like a camera up on a tripod, you're gonna get distortion, right? Straight down, perfectly perpendicular, that part is gonna be, gonna be accurate. But as soon as you start to get out from that center point, you'll start to get distortion in, 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 um, in your image. And it's gonna be really hard for you to get things exactly lined up. But if you can get a good scan of a play field, go for it. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to work great. It's going to be very accurate. It'll work for you just fine. Um, to do that, so you take a picture, and this can be whether it's for pinball or for anything else. You have a picture. It can be something you draw, and you take a picture of it and bring it in. Um, you draw it inside Photoshop, bring it in. Like, however, you get some sort of a visual reference of the thing you want to model. Um, you're simply going to go up here to where it says Insert, click on Canvas, You'll go through, you'll find that on your computer, you'll browse around for it, you'll load it in, okay? Once you load it in, the first thing you need to do is you wanna right click over here and hit calibrate. You need to go through and be able to tell Fusion 360 
some sort of reference of how big this thing is so it knows how to scale that accurately because it's trying to keep things very accurate to real world so those measurements so when you do go through and decide to like you know cut something out of metal or metal or wood it knows exactly what size things are so you need to find reference points on this is the way this works okay if i zoom in let me get rid of this over here it's going to give me these crosshairs now okay and i'm going to go through and i'm going to line that up with this inside edge of this hole i'm going to click once now it lets a marker there and i'm going to pan across to the inside edge of this one. And I know that these are, because I've measured for my play field, 200 millimeters apart. So I'm gonna click right there. Pretty close already, right? I've done this, once, done this once before. You wanna eyeball it as close as you can. You're gonna type in your measurement, boom, okay, you're gonna hit return. And that's gonna scale the image to that size inside Fusion 360. To where then, as you put that on top of your actual 3D model of your play field, Okay, you'll see how that lines up to the right size. Now the other thing with the canvas, if you right click and hit edit canvas, this X, Y distance and angle, this will allow you to rotate and kind of move things around, okay? This also has a canvas opacity, which I like to bring down to about 35. That allows me to see the image, but still you know, see the model underneath it so I can see what's going on and just makes things a little bit easier. So right around 35-ish, doesn't have to be exact, right? Okay. Bingo. And now we've got that, and you can see how that, you know, is lining up to the holes that I've done on the actual play field itself, okay? Lining up pretty close, other than these, other than these lane guides that we know are nowhere near because I have a different one, but anyway. Okay, so that's how you bring in a canvas, how you calibrate it, and then you need to have these reference points right, okay, you can mess with the opacity. Okay, that's all the basics around canvases. Otherwise, the other way to go about things is simply, you know, look on your play field, Find these, these points here, right, where a drill, uh, where a hole is drilled, something like that, these slots, uh, switch slots, and then measure from, the, um, from that point, right, from like the outer edge of a hole to the outside edge of your play field, and then um, from that edge down to like the front edge of your play field, right? If you remember, I went through and put up some public files that have these measurements that I went here and just created an image file for you to go through and show, you know, okay, this hole here, all right, for this post is 48 millimeters from the left edge of the play field and 332 millimeters from that front edge of the play field, all right? So that way, if you just even aren't using a CNC machine, you can just like measure it out accurately with your drill press or a hand drill and just drill the hole, okay? But you need to get those measurements in some way, right? Once you have those measurements, then you're gonna come in. Now, the other thing to understand with Fusion 360, these are just kind of the basics of how to like create a model is you go through and use what's called a sketch. Okay, so Fusion 360 has you come in and create a sketch. I'm gonna go through and assume you kinda of know the basics of that. You've got your play field out here and talk more about how we're going to measure things in Fusion 360. So there is a measure tool. The shortcut for it is the keyboard um, command I, the letter I on your keyboard brings it measure. I don't know who came up with that, but that's what it is. Okay, and you can go through and pick two points. For example, let's just say I'm gonna go through and pick and measure how wide my play field is. I click, click once to click this left, pick this left edge. Okay, the number one is there. Click over here again, number two. Okay, it's so now, it's not showing on the screen for some reason. But all the way across the distance over here, okay, 514.35 millimeters. And we know that 514.35 millimeters is 20 and one quarter inch. Okay, and that's how wide our play field needs to be. So that's, that's correct. <laughs> all right, good, yay, I didn't mess that up. But you can use that then to go through and measure a bunch of different things. So. If you wanna go through and put your hole in, for example, let's say that this hole wasn't here yet, right? Or I needed another one right above it for some reason. You right click on the model, on the face of your model, click Create Sketch, okay? Again, just like how you create your sketch. I love, and by love I mean hate how Fusion 360 always moves, it always pans things for some reason once you do that. And then you can come in here and you can click these, use these different surface tools, all right? The lines, these are lines that will connect this is just gonna go through and draw a rectangle. This will draw a circle. Let's say I want a circle here, right? These are about four millimeters. Let's say I needed one right about here. I click once, okay? Then I click and drag, and this is gonna go through and show me the diameter. And if you can't get it like, oh, I want like right around four, well, you can let go. It's still highlighting. You can just type in, you know, four and a half millimeters or whatever it is, you know, four millimeters, exactly what it is you want, okay? And you hit enter. Bam, and now you've got a circle. And right now, it's a blue line, it's just a mark on the model, okay? 
It's not actually there yet, okay? We can still take it. We can finish the sketch here now, and we can move that, okay? I want to move a sketch object, okay? Click my sketch ob object, object, and I can move that down to exactly where I want that to be. It needs to be lower, it needs to be over here to the right. Um, if I want to try to make sure like it's lining up exactly with this other one, I can bring it down here on top. Okay, and I, again, I can type in here to get fairly exact where I want to make sure it's lined up. Okay, and now this direction I want it to be, you know, negative two, whoops, negative one, negative 0.5, like whatever it is, right? Okay, that's pretty well lined up, great. And then I say, okay, I need that to be exactly, you know, five millimeters up from the other one. All right, from that center. Okay, like you can go through and move that to exactly where you want. The important thing is you want to get your sketch object, as they call it, exactly the right position before you actually go through and use the next step, which is press pull to go through and actually have that get taken out and cut out of the play field. Now press pull is cool because you just click and drag. If I pull it backwards, you can see it's red. It means it's gonna make a hole in the play field. If I pull it forward, it's actually gonna like extrude and pull this out as a solid, solid surface from the front. Okay, so I'm just gonna push it backwards. This changes this operation here to a cut, you can see, right? If I pull forward, Fusion 360 changes that to a join. So it kind of is semi-intelligent and knows, oh, okay, you're pushing backwards, you want a cut, you want to make a hole, boom. I hit okay, it thinks about it, bam, it made my hole. The reason I say you want to have the sketch object in the right place first is once you actually have this cut, trying to come through now, after the fact, and move it, it never lines up and gives you these exactly orthogonally, like perpendicular parallel to one of your other edges. So trying to say, I want to move this exactly five millimeters up now, I'm doing my best to try to like line this up. I have to like zoom in and get this lined up to be like, you know, straight up and down. It's like, okay, what is it, like 24 degrees, 23, 22. It, you're eyeballing it and it's a pain in the butt. I'm not a Fusion 360 guru. Maybe there is a better way to go about that. I have not found one. So for me, I make sure my sketch objects are lined up exactly where I want them before I go through and do my press pull operation to go through and actually push them through as actual holes. All right, now I'm gonna remove that. I don't actually need that hole. But let's say you've gone through now and you've done all your holes, all your pockets, all your slots, right? Um, pockets is just basically the term that 360 uses for like kind of a, a large hole of some sort. You're gonna be clearing out the wood, okay? So I've got all those. <sighs> Everything's all set up and create, ready to go. I now want to move from my design operation to what, at least in this current version, 2.0.10, I believe, Fusion I'm in. 2.0, yeah, 0.10. They call that now the Manufacturer tab. Okay, Manufacturer. So I'm gonna switch over to Manufacturer. All right, so once you get in here inside Manufacturing, first thing you need to go through and do is create a new setup. I've already got some here, but let's go through and create a new one. Hit New Setup. Okay, don't have to worry about machine. Operation should be milling. Model orientation, we're gonna click on that and change that to Z and X axis, okay? We're gonna click here on the Z axis, boop. And we're gonna change this down here from origin. This is the gonna equal the homing point of your CNC machine, okay? Where it homes back to zero, zero, which is like bottom left, at least that's the way my CNC machine works. Um, we're gonna change that to model box point. And if we change this camera angle, we can see it's going through and giving us a bunch of different little dots here on the edges, okay, that we can go through and choose. We're gonna choose the bottom left dots, the top dot, okay, the top edge of our model, okay? If I go back here to front, okay, that's looking good. Why? Because the whole entire actual play field is within the red and green, within Y and X axis, okay, up and to the right. If it was something like that, that would be bad. That's the opposite of what we want. That'd be telling it, oh, this is your origin. And every time a tool path starts, I'm gonna start taking off down here in this direction, boom. Okay, it's gonna go in the direction of the arrow. So you wanna make sure it's looking like that. You also wanna make sure that your Z axis, this arrow, the one pointing, is pointing up. Okay, it might seem counterintuitive, but basically we're saying our tool is going to start up here and then we're gonna be pushing it negative through that Z plane down through the wood to do all of our cuts, okay? If 
it's like, you know, this or anything else different where it's pointing down the other direction. That's, that's not what you want. It's not going to work. Okay. So that's how we want things lined up. That's an important part. It took me a little while to figure that out and to realize, what do I, do I go down here? That seems more intuitive. Do I do probably not the middle? No, not the middle. Like, okay. You want this top edge of your, of your wood. Okay. And everything lining up. Now, I'm saying all that kind of with a little bit of a grain of salt because exactly which axis is which direction, whether it's red and yellow or red and green, green and red, all that's going to kind of depend on how you set up your original model. When you came in and you created your initial sketch and started your play field model at the rectangle that is your piece of wood, right? You could have either had that be to where the, you know, the front of the model is the um, X axis right in front of you. Could have been the Z axis, could have been the Y, you could have it on the side, like, so like depending on how the model actually loads in, like if you look at this over here on the left-hand side, these play fields are all kind of like up and down, right? But this one, the little picture is flat. It's because I actually created that one starting on a different plane. Okay, so when I looked at it from the front, I was basically looking at it right like this. It's kind of personal preference. I didn't like that. When I loaded it in and I hit the home button, um, I wanted it to look like this. I didn't want it to look, you know, like that, I guess, right? Or like that. Anyways, so depending on exactly how you oriented your model, exactly which axis is going which direction, that might vary a little bit for you, okay? But regardless, the important thing you want to have happen is when you are looking at the model, your play field from the top down, whether that's Z or X or whatever, okay? You want to make sure that this origin point is at the bottom left of your play field and whether it's Z or whether it's Y, you want to make sure that you are in this top corner and that your third axis is coming up away from the wood, okay? Otherwise, you're going to go through and it's going to like just want to be like cutting the air on top of the wood and not going through, And okay? So that's my understanding. If I'm wrong, someone please correct me in the comments. I'm not a Fusion 360 guru, but that's what I found through my own trial and error that I need to make sure things are lined up this way or else none of my cut paths worked, okay? All right, so with that, we don't have to worry in here about the mode, about program name, boom, okay, we're, we're done, okay? We can hit okay. Now that's our setup. That's still in the computer, the general, okay, this is his homing position, where things are at. Now what do you want us to actually do, human? Okay, so this is where we're gonna go through and start adding new, what they call operations, okay? If you right click on this, we have the option here for a new operation. Okay, we're gonna be doing milling. You can also just use these shortcut tools up here, okay? Mine are lined up, I've arranged it to where I've got the slot, the 2D pocket, and the bore um, tools up here. It's also some 3D ones which I use for my shooter lane. I'm still figuring those out. We'll focus on the 2D ones today, okay? These are the three core ones that I use for pretty much everything on a pinball machine. For me, they've been working out fine so far, okay? If you click down here, you might not have the same ones up here, you can kind of rearrange this menu. It's a separate thing, right? But you'll see the full list of them. Slot. That is for, for us, it's gonna be for switch slots, okay? You're just doing a slot, okay? Um, very simple. We're also gonna be doing bore, which is simply going down in a little bit of a helical motion, a circle, and we're gonna be drilling the post holes, okay? All the little circles you see in here, right? The last one we're gonna be doing is 2D pocket. You can also use 2D adaptive clearing. That's like kind of the go-to one. I'm still kind of figuring out exactly the nuances between the two. Um, I've actually found I've had a little bit more success for whatever reason using 2D Pocket to set up for like the ball trough and the, the pockets, the holes for like the slingshot area. Again, your mileage may vary, but one of these two are gonna be doing the majority of the other kind of larger areas where we're clearing out wood, okay? I use Pocket for, um, for down here, for along these, um, the, the notches I'm doing out of the corner for where the switches are gonna be. I did it for the large hole up top for where my staircase goes. Okay, 2D pocket or 2D adaptive clearing. You're gonna be using one of those two for our, all these larger holes, okay? So, those are the three. Let's go through and show you how to go through and do one of these, all right? Let's go through and select slot first. It's a very basic one, okay? Slot is what we're gonna be doing for these switch slots, okay? Now, it immediately is allowing me to go through and kind of select these little objects, okay, or these these holes. And I can select these select these edges. Okay? If I select select the wrong thing, like this giant hole, 
and go through and hit OK. It's going to think about it. It's going to spit it out. It's going to give me an error and say, mm, this doesn't really work. It's not really a slot. Okay, so it expects you to be kind of semi semi intelligent. You can select anything. You want to select the right things for the tool you're using. Now, before we even go through and do our pocket selection, if you've never done this before, your very first time, you need to make sure you have the right tool configured inside Fusion 360. And the tool equates out to, like this little picture shows, basically your drill bit. <laughs> okay. It's going to open a library. There's a whole slew of like tools already defined inside Fusion 360. You can try to find the one that matches the actual like drill bit you're using. Or you can go through and kind of add a tool, okay, and do that for yourself. So I've got in here a tool already that I added, okay. Is this, can I resize this for you a little bit? It's a double-edged, straight cut, milling cutter. Um, I've actually got it kind of replicated in here three times for some reason. I'm not sure how I did that, but I did. Okay, it's a flat end mill, okay. So the way you do that, hit the plus sign. I say, okay, milling. Okay, what type of mill? Is it a ball end um, bit? Okay, is it a flat end? Those are the most common ones. You also can have face, radius. I mean, there's, there's, there's fancy ones, right? But for us, pretty much either gonna be doing a ball end mill or a flat end mill. And I'm just starting with a simple flat end. It's doing the majority of everything I need with it. So I select flat end mill. Okay, boom, great. Kind of shows a preview of it. I can put in a description, right? My test tool. Great, whatever. Move over here to cutter, okay? Number of flutes, okay? This is important, flutes. If I hover, will it go through and tell me? The number of cutting flutes on the tool. A flute is basically the number of these edges that you have, right? Those are your flutes. This is the three flute. If I change that to two flute, that is not changing. I thought the picture was gonna update. All right, well, mine's a three. <laughs> okay, the units in millimeters. The material, high, stress steel, high tensile steel, anyway, it's HSS. You have a titanium car coated one, a carbide one. Okay, for me, it's HSS, I have a basic one. The diameter, okay, overall diameter is kind of like this part up here, overall diameter, okay. The shaft diameter, I thought this showed, if I hovered over it, I thought it would go through and show. There we go, okay, if you click on it, it shows, okay, the tool diameter, the actual diameter, okay, mine is 3.175. Actual diameter, ooh, look, it made it skinnier. Okay, length below the holder, okay? If I put this all the way up inside my collet, what's the average length I'm gonna have below? This one you don't really know until you actually put it inside your CNC machine, inside your router, right, the machine, and lock it in, and, and, and that can vary a little bit. So you wanna have this be pretty accurate to where it's gonna be. So shove that thing all the way up in, okay, so it's in there nice and tight, and see how much is left. Okay, there should be at least some, you know, non-flute edge of your of your bit sticking out. If not, just get it to an area, okay, that kind of you can like eyeball it and know where you're always going to be putting it. Okay, put in that measurement. I forget what it is. I think my measurement is length below was like right around 30. Okay, and now shoulder length. Okay, the area that's actually going to be cutting material. Let's say mine is just 20, and the actual height of your of your flutes. How tall are those? Okay, this basically lets it know, okay, if I plunge down, this is how much I can plunge in and, and actually you know, be cutting wood, not be putting too much stress on, et cetera. So I just kinda made those up right now. I forget what mine were right off, all right? I can go ahead and hit cancel and show you my actual one here. Right click, hit edit tool, go to cutter. Okay, mine apparently only has two flutes, okay? This is the shaft diameter, my overall length is 45. Length below was 35, I was close. Shoulder length, 30. Flute length, 18, all right? But you want these to be fairly accurate. I, mean, um, I do like to change my feed rate zone, my speed, okay, for the, sp for the spindle, okay? My feed rates, no more than 700, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna be in ramping at 300. Otherwise, you're gonna be moving way too fast through and, brrr, and things are gonna be contorted and warped. Your circles aren't gonna be round. They're gonna be all like stretched. If you go too fast, this, this metal will bend and flex and it's gonna not be accurate. So get your feed rate down. I learned that the hard way also. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, get your feed rate down to a, a, a normal uh, amount. 700 is where I put mine. It's been working really well. I'd say 500 to 700. Okay, I'm gonna cancel out of that. But you need to come through, you need to pick a tool. Okay, you're gonna hit select, bingo. Now that's up here. You should see your tool up in here, okay? That's important. Now. Once you've done that once, 
you won't really need to worry about it when you go through and change your other operations. Again, it kind of is going to, it should default to that tool. Now let's get back to, we're actually gonna pick our areas. Now, so now I'm gonna actually pick the slots, okay? I'm just gonna click on them. If it doesn't all turn blue, if only kind of like one end of your slot turns blue, that's kind of a big sign that you've probably somehow messed up these, these axes down here below. Otherwise, it should be selecting the full area, all right? Then we're gonna go over here to the Heights tab. We're gonna come down here to Bottom Height. We're gonna change that from Selected Contour to Model Bottom. That's to help make sure that the, the bit doesn't just go right along kind of this line we selected at the very top, but it knows, oh, everything we're doing in this lot, the, what, what I should consider the bottom of my cutting path is actually gonna be the bottom of your actual model, which for us is that half inch thick, equaling out to the wood. Okay, I'm actually gonna plunge all the way through. I didn't do that a couple times, wasn't really paying attention. Went, sat down at the machine, drove all the way down to my makerspace, turned it on, I started drilling it, it took about a millimeter off the top. I said, all right, I'm done. Because I went to the bottom of that, of that little contour you selected. I'm like, why is this not cutting all the way through? It took me a little while to figure that out. Okay, so always change that to model bottom and you should avoid a lot of errors. Okay, the fourth tab here, passes. Check multiple deaths, make sure that is turned on. I like to do multiple deaths. I started out at three millimeters. I'm down to two because I still snapped one of my drill bits. Um, this basically is gonna go through like the little picture shows here and determine am I going just like all the way down in and then cutting my slot, which is gonna put a lot of stress on that drill bit and you're gonna snap and break them trying to cut through a half inch piece of wood all in one turn. You don't wanna do that. If you see here the picture on the left, these multiple paths, those blue lines shows I'm gonna go down a couple of millimeters each time and take a little bit of wood away. That's gonna make sure I don't snap my your, your drill bit while it's cutting, okay? So do multiple deaths. For me, the magic has been two millimeters. Again, your mileage may vary. I'd say between two and three millimeters. Much more than that, you're gonna be kind of pushing it for how thin of a bit we're using. Okay, and then you can hit, okay, that's it for slot, okay? Model bottom, multiple paths, okay. And now it goes through and it generated, it thought about it, created it. And we can go through up here this little thing up here inside actions, we can hit simulate. Ah, and we can actually watch it go through and cut. Change an angle, let's hit play. Zing, zing, it's gonna go through. This is important because it's gonna show us where it's gonna start. It's gonna start with the slot on the left, not the slot on the right. It's gonna go through in this order, right? It's actually cutting all the way through the model we can see here, okay? Going through and simulating things is so freaking helpful, okay? This yellow line, the red dot shows you where it's going to start. Okay, it's gonna start here. It's gonna go through, it's gonna connect, and this is the path it's gonna take. These yellow paths, it's so important to understand where the drill bit's gonna be moving in your CNC machine while it's cutting, even when it's in between, which is moving like from slot A to slot B, especially if you're doing anything like around an edge of your play field, because you're gonna be in there, you're gonna have clamps and things, clamping down your wood, right? To hold it nice and tight. Unless you have some really high-end commercial one that's gonna have like some crazy vacuum pump and just hold it in place for you maybe. I haven't used one of those before. But like the X-Carve, it has these little clamps you screw down into the field and it clamps on top of the, of the wood, hold it in place. If you don't know exactly, and I've done this, believe me, I'm sure everybody has. If you don't know exactly where this toolpath's going, and you'll be able to verify this again in the actual CNC software. We'll show you this also before you actually hit go. I haven't quite paid attention. I thought, oh, that, that should clear my little thing. And it starts from this bottom left corner and immediately goes and says, hey, for this one, I'm gonna go zoom straight out here to the right with the bit on and turning zoom super fast and just go right across the right. And I'd forgotten I had a clamp right here like in the middle of the wood and it cut right through the middle of my clamp, snap my drill bit, bam, okay? so. It's important to understand where these yellow lines are because that is where the live active cutting bit is gonna be going around on top of your wood. And if there's anything there in the way, it's gonna hit it, it doesn't care. It's just gonna to try to move right through it. It's assuming that you've taken all that into consideration. So, all right, enough said about that, but it's important, okay? Make sure, that's, make sure you're paying attention to that. All right, so that's a slot. Now let's go through and do a bore. Okay. Look over here, our tool is selected. Okay, we're all set. We can just start selecting the holes. Doesn't matter the order that we select them. Let's see how it's drawing the yellow line. It's gonna go through and adjust and adapt things to whatever it thinks is the most intelligent path anyway. Okay, go over here to heights, change our bottom height again to model bottom. For this one, we don't need to worry about multiple passes or depths, okay? Um, there's an option for it. I, it just drills straight down in the whole time. It bores through. I don't, 
I don't need it. I don't feel that that is needed. So I haven't been using it. I hit OK. It thinks about it. Bam. And now we could go through and simulate this one also if we wanted to. This was not as exciting to simulate. It just says, yep, boom, boom, I'm drilling holes. This is the direction I'm going. This is the path I'm taking. Now you'll notice this one started at the top right, okay, and then went over to the left. I'm not sure. That might be beyond me exactly how to control, but the red's over here now. So there you go. I think part of it honestly has to do with the order of these operations. So it knows it's going to be doing the slots. It's going to end here, so then it's going to start over here. That's my assumption that it's smart enough to do that. We'll see. All right. The next one we're going to do here is pocket. Pocket is going to be for our bigger areas, okay, for these half inch holes we're drilling, okay, doing a bore. That would just take, I don't know, probably about the same amount of time, but I, I find I'm having better luck with pocket. I like how it goes in, kind of does a layer at a time. Anyway, so again, our tool's already selected. I'm going to go through and start selecting these. All right. Now, Again, model, height, bottom height, model bottom. Passes, stock to leave, turn that off. We do not want to bother with that. Multiple deaths, turn on. Maximum roughing step down, again, I use two millimeters for mine. Hit OK. It's going to think that should be all we need. Bam, 100%, figured out. Now this one kind of looks cool also, you can, you can see you know, it's going to start in the middle of these and then slowly work its way out. Okay, it's going to slowly clear this out. See this circle here? It's going to start in the center and then clear itself out in a circle. Okay, and again, go through and simulate first and watch. And you can see how it does that. That's kind of cool. All right, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, that's doing that in a good fashion. It's not going to take too much wood at first and break my drill bit. And you can control the speed of the simulation if you really want to see more careful, more slowly how it's going. See how it's doing that like spiral motion to clear out. Bit at a time until it gets it all cleared out. Oop, all the way down through. And then we're going to move over here and start going through the other ones. Okay, I like to have mine sped up a little bit faster, but you get the idea. So you get to go through and simulate and see all those. And okay, this is actually doing what I want it to do. This is what it's expected. Okay, all right, everything looking good. So there you have it. The last thing I guess I would go through and show is going through and doing the pockets for these bottom ones can be a little bit of a pain. I want to turn this to where I can grab my bottom edges here. Do my 2D pocket. I'm going to click this bottom edge. Now you notice the entire bottom edge of my model is being highlighted. That's not what I want or else the tool is going to try to go all the way around the outside. I just want this one little area. So highlight it until it turns red and double click. Okay, you get this little menu here. Close contour open contour. Click on open contour and now that one's blue. We're just going to click this other edge. These two edges. I only really want you to worry about these two edges. Hit the plus sign, accept that open contour. Okay, you know you got the right stuff if the only thing is blue is the area you actually want to have cut out. If that's correct then you can go over your, to your heights, change your bottom height to model bottom again, Turn off stock to leave, turn on your multiple depths, turn it to two millimeter, hit OK. Should only think for a couple of seconds. And bingo. That's the toolpath we want it to do. We can simulate it and verify. Yep, that's what we want. It's going through and taking it a layer at a time so we don't break our drill bit, only trying to cut around that one area. Bingo. Okay, so <laughs> let me show you that again in case that was too fast. This is something that took me a while to figure out. These edges I still sometimes will kind of forget and they're the hardest ones because it, it by default wants to try to like go all the way around your model, which again, we don't have, I don't have a CNC machine big enough to do that. It wastes time. I, I don't need to worry about all that. I'm happy for it to do one of these sections at a time instead of trying to do like all 
you know, all three of these cuts and edges all at the same time. So I do my 2D pocket, okay? I click the bottom edge. For me, I'm doing the bottom edge just because I have the shooter lane and the top edge. It's just, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Pick one, okay? Highlight it till it turns red, double click. You get this little menu. Go back to, click on open contour. Pay attention to what is actually highlighted blue. For me, it's just this one edge. I want both these edges. Now, you don't have to worry about getting this little like beveled one here. It's gonna automatically connect them. Okay, I have those two edges. Hit the plus sign to accept that current contour. It tells you, okay, these are the areas I'm worrying about. Great. Again, set your bottom height to your model bottom so it knows to go the full entire depth. Do multiple passes without leaving stock so it does it multiple passes instead of all in one and break your bit. It thinks about it. Once we're all done, you can see all these yellow lines of all the different levels and passes of where it's gonna be going through and doing it. That's what we want. That looks good. And again, when in doubt, go through and click simulate and watch it do it before we actually try to go through and cut, okay? All right, now, last thing, you've gotta go through and export all these, right? So we've gone through, we've created these tool paths, okay? You're gonna go through, up here in actions is G1, G2, that's an icon, okay? It says post process. We're gonna click on that, post process. My post processor, I'm doing easel, because that's the software I'm gonna be using for my CNC machine, okay? I don't need to change anything else, that's all I do for mine, hit easel, I hit okay. It brings up a save dialog, okay, where do I wanna save this? Okay, for me, I've got it on my Google Drive, Pinball Manufacturing, Inside CNC, okay, Play Fields, my CNC cut files, and now which one is this is for my slots, in lane switch slots, bam, that'd be the one. I'd hit save, I'm not gonna overwrite mine, so, you know, blah, 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 at the end, I hit save. Boom, it goes through, thinks for a minute. It's actually pretty fast. It's already up there. I'll go through, see. Let's go into, out of my public files, into my manufacturing, CNC, play field, in lane slot, blah, 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 ASDF, there it is, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, I don't need that one. Okay, export. You're done, you're gonna take that file, you're gonna put it on, like, on your thumb drive or something, you're gonna take it to your makerspace, you're gonna plug it into the computer, you're gonna go inside easel, you're gonna say, hey, new project, open a file, import, all files, you're gonna browse, you're gonna click on it, it's gonna come into easel, it's gonna show you a very similar thing as far as this cut path and the model and say, is this what you want? You follow the steps in easel and you're all set. One last tip I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes, because it's gonna to happen to you, You'll go through, you'll do all this, everything's gonna be great. Then you realize, oh, I need to make a change. So you're gonna go back into design, you're gonna say, oh, this isn't quite right. I wanna move this thing, or I wanna add something. Boom, you do that. You're gonna make some sort of change to your model inside the design tab, I guarantee it. If nothing else, you're gonna be adding more to it, right? Then you're gonna go from design back to manufacture. And you're going back to manufacture and you're gonna see this, you're gonna go, like, holy, what happened? All these red exclamation points. This is simply Fusion 360 telling you, hey, these are outdated paths we computed. You've made a change to your model. You need to go back through and regenerate these tool paths. And if everything's still kosher, we'll give you a new one that works. If something broke, well, we're gonna give you an error. It's really simple. Unless you really have done something crazy drastic to one of these things, you can just select. You can even multi-select, okay? At least within a, within a setup. For me, it's Command G and Windows might be like Control G. Or you can right click and you're gonna hit Generate. And it's gonna go through and regenerate, rethink about all these, oh, do these all still work? Get a little beach ball of death going on. It's gonna go through and recreate them all. And bingo, now they're all, you get a little percentage. You recreate them and you're fine. Everything's good. Everything's there for you, just like they were before. No harm, no foul, okay? But that's an important thing. Don't freak out if you come back in, you see these red exclamation points. I mean, be aware but don't freak out. You're just gonna need to regenerate your tool paths, then you should be all good to go. Okay, all right, well, there you go. Um, 
that took a little longer than what I thought, um, but I was just trying to be detailed and show you, you know, step by step exactly what I do. Um, because there's these little nuances you don't get quite right. You'll waste a lot of time beating your head, trying to figure out what is not quite right. How come my CNC machine is just cutting air and never, never going down on my wood? Michael, there you go. Hope that shows you what you needed, what you wanted. If not, leave me more comments. Let me know. Um, everybody else watching, also, I hope, I hope that it was helpful and educational. Hope it wasn't super boring, but if you're in a fusion trying to figure this out, I, I don't know any other way to do it other than to go through and just show you what I figured out and how I do it, the settings I use, and hopefully it all works out great for you also. If not, please let me know. If you're running into problems, um, we can try to figure this out together. Uh, there might have been some small little thing maybe I'm not thinking of right now that I missed. I, I tried to just walk you through it and not skip any steps, so I think we're all good to go. Um, okay, everybody, until next time, like, subscribe, share this out with everybody. I hope you're having fun with a CNC machine. You can do so many fun things with it. One of the other fun things I did, I'll just lift this up really fast. I have this little lap board that I set my laptop on so it doesn't you know, roast on my legs. There's a little Space Invaders symbol. Um, There's just a little piece of wood that I found online and I modeled a bunch of little slots as you can see right, a couple of pocket holes, the shape of the board I wanted on my, on my lap and I took it around my CNC machine or mine, again, the Makerspace CNC machine, um, cut it right out, sanded it, stained it, and now I've got a little lap board. So that's probably its own little video I probably should have gone through and made, huh? Oh well, fun little stuff you can make along the way and now you don't, you don't get all hot and sweaty from the laptop being on your lap. So, all right everybody, um, take care. Until next time, I hope you've had a lot of fun. Show me your progress, your pinball machines, post it up on YouTube, everywhere else. Let us know what you're doing, all right? I'll talk to you later, bye-bye.